Hey guys, today I finally announced the beginning of the new series, which is going to be how to make a game like Poke Kicker with Godot using GD Script. So this is going to be a code through series again. Um, I will show you how to make features in depth, which is quite important if you are a beginner game dev, right? You, you really need to have this um, slow pace explanation thing. So that will be part of the series. And another aspect of this series, which is going to be very important later on, is that it is a collaborative series. So basically it is an open source project that you can access uh, on GitHub at any moment. Uh, I actually can show you the repository right now. So I created a very simple repository, which is the core concept of, I mean, the core boil plate of a Godot project. There's just the Godot project, I changed a few settings uh, to add static, type, static typing, and I made a very simple roadmap for the first videos of the series. So if you don't know how to contribute on a public open source project, there is a video that I made on this very topic so you should find a link somewhere up to go there. And yeah, uh, at first it won't be very obvious how to contribute, but uh, later on the roadmap will expand and as we will have done things in, in the series, in the episodes, you will have a few ideas about what you can do. Basically, it's it can be summed up as things you can add to the project and which makes sense. So think think about the Pokemons, for example. They're like fun of them, and coding each Pokemon can take quite some time. So eventually, I will do a few of them at first, and. Then, for the later on, maybe you guys can contribute making some Pokemons. On the same side, you can contribute by bringing arts or sounds or whatever, actually. It really depends on your preferred skills, I'd say. Right. An important note is that in this game, in this project, there is no such thing as a defined and set um, ways to do things, okay? So I'm gonna give you a very simple example. Let's say that very early in the series, we will work on the state pattern that manages the combat, the capture, basically the wild encounters. I will do it one way. Okay, but um, you might have ideas for improvement, or you might have ideas to do things differently. It's absolutely fine. If you do, do think you can improve the project, well, that's, that's the point, right? You, you can bring it. The idea there is that I actually want this series to not just be my way of doing things, but to be able to include other ways, different ways coming from other people so that we have a wider um, range of kind of ways to do things so that, you know, it's easier to, to learn and progress when you get out of your own box of thinking and get to watch what other people are doing. How do they do it, etc., etc. So that's 
that's going to be important, right? Uh, don't think that just because the future is done, it's untouchable. Absolutely not. About the contributions and how I will bring those contributions um, to the series, um, it would be great uh, that you leave a, a name that you want to be referred to when you make a contribution. And yeah, basically any type of code that I will take from one of the contributors, um, I will send you to whoever do, did that. And if they have a YouTube channel or Discord account and they want to be uh, public and known, that's a thing too, right? It's, uh, I will make sure that this is, um, this is done. No problem in that. And yeah, later on the series when contribution becomes a little more um, easy and flowing, maybe, um, some of the episodes of the series will be showcasing uh, some features done by some people. Showcasing the features and eventually going through the code and explaining why things were implemented and how to make something similar, all right? I think that's quite it for the general ideas of the series. So first, I don't expect people to be rushing in contribution. I mean, if you do want to do it, like, super cool. But I just kind of think that it will take quite some time for people to notice the series, get um, get the memo basically that the, the series is on and they can participate. And yeah, so you can quite literally start right away working on features which are, um, you might, th might say quite far, right? Like for example, at the moment um, doing gym leaders or even the hatchery isn't really um, part of the first episode, right? You, we have other things to do first. If you want to start on that, well, sure, why not? All right. So anyway, the beginning of the series will be mostly the beginner-oriented tutorials. And later on, we will go on a more um, intermediate focus level. And what I will probably do is episodes which are very much um, targeting beginner developers, right? So I want this series to be, well, it's not going to be one size fits all, definitely not. But it's going to be a series with different types of episodes. And I will do my best to um label each episode so you know which level of game dev is discussed here so that we do have content for the beginner game dev so they can start and create things and then we will have also content for intermediate game dev so they don't get bored by my never-ending explanations so that's something I want to do in there, right? All right. So let's just take a look at the game we're using as a reference, which is right there, Poke Cooker. So the goal of this series is to make an idle game. So it is a clicker game. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not so much of a fan of clicking in idle games. I always end up doing weird things with auto clickers and scripts and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's the test subject. So we're going to roll with it. So yeah, at first, I am definitely not going to implement everything at once. And I just want the game to reach a first state of um, 
I want to say core features that we can work with. Um, for example, right now, the quests are definitely not necessary at the moment, um, even though eggs are very important. Um, yeah, I'm not going to bother with that at the start. Um, the very first things I will focus on is um, just getting the core layout and user interface of the application ready so that uh, you guys can um, pick one, if you wish, or whatever, and begin to flesh it out. Uh, so what I'm planning to do, you can see it in this very rudimentary roadmap here. Um, I'm actually focusing on this uh, side here of the screen, as we can see. Uh, I want the currency uh, block to be here, the main block, obviously. Uh, at first, the map will be, um, I want to say not a map, it will be a list, which later on will be translating, translated into a map, right? Uh, I want the capture settings and the Pokemon list. Those are the one, two, three, four, five blocks I want to have ready for the core, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five. And also I would like to have a rudimentary data class and database system so that we can begin implementing uh, Pokemons and saving the progress very early in a game. All right. Magic Research was the competing game to get the slot of the series, uh, but it didn't. Uh, sadly, it didn't. However, there were some people who were interested. Point is, I have absolutely no idea um, what is the programming game dev level of the people who voted this series. So I'm, I'm just thinking, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying this will happen. Actually, it might just, um, might not interest the people in the, uh, who voted that, that maybe uh, some people will actually want to make the magic research project, right? And I could keep an eye on it on the side as a secondary project while I'm working on Pokeclicker as a main project. So I'm not, uh, no, I'd say that I'm willing to participate in that other project, I'm not making uh, it a code through series with many videos and stuff, but more um, eventually keeping updates and using that project for bringing in some useful future tutorial, right? Because for example, in Magic Research, uh, if you don't know the game, there's this feature where you can, um, I want to say set up apprentices, which will cast spells based on the amount of apprentices set on a specific spell. So basically you have 30 apprentices and you sort around them based on whatever combination of spells you want to be rotating. And yeah, that's a very interesting thing to learn to do in a idle game because every spell will have a different timer based on the number of apprentices and it's there's so many spells and so many combinations that you do have to create a way that's flexible so that's a very interesting feature so anyway and my point is because i'm drifting away my point is uh, if some of you guys are willing to make that project and work on that project um you can message me on discord or whatever uh, so that we can see if we can make it um, happen on the side while Pocket Clicker is getting the spotlight. So yeah, I think we're done now. Um, 
and I will, yeah, I will jump in uh, filming and editing of the first episodes of the Pocket Clicker video. Um, if you are a more advanced game dev and that you're not so much interested in the full detail of things which you may already know or, or you already listen to if you watch the Stardust Project series, um, the first episode will be, I will be going back to what I already did in the Stardust Project series. Because yeah, the odds of beginners will come to this series without watching the Stardust series, which really is more of a crash test uh, rather than a very well-crafted tutorial. <laughs> So yeah, um, just know that the first video might be a little bit dull, but yeah, it should get more interested as we tackle with the state pattern and as soon as the project begins to get lively and contributions begin coming in the way. Um, by all means, if you want to participate in the series, you can do it on your own, on your side, full private, that's completely okay. But if you wish to discuss and have a little fun with the guys working on this project, I'm saying the guys because at the moment, 100% of my viewers are men. <laughs> but yeah, um, you can pass on the Discord to Whatever, you know how this could work. <laughs> so anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank you for watching this one. And yeah, take care.